As always, uh, there are three major pillars of, of the work of the United Nations, development, peace and security, human rights. And I think what, what we will try to do uh, in this short window of opportunity with the Danish presidency is to even more underline the interconnectivity of all the challenges we are, for, we are facing. And, and then, of course, there is the whole agenda, the often too long stalled agenda of, of uh, disarmament. Uh, we, are, we are in a situation now where there is a strong need for building new confidence between the major powers in order to stop proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and re-engage in real negotiations about disarmament, both uh, on weapons of mass destruction and nuclear, chemical and biological weapons, but also on conventional weapons. And we are, we are certainly not there now. We are in a, in a situation where uh, big powers are using much more money on armament right now, uh, and, and, and there is this urgent need also for them to go together, both to end some of the bloody conflicts we have and to build new confidence, new control mechanisms in order to avoid what is the, the uh, risk always, uh, for instance, on, on nuclear weapons, when so much uh, nuclear weapons is in high alert, high alert the risk of uh, unwanted and unexpected uh, episodes, those risks are high. We have to realize that and we have to work with new mechanisms to control the risk of, of, of uh, unintended episodes and use of that kind of weapons. Uh, what we have reached with the United Nations is that over the 70 years it has become a really global institution. Almost everybody is there, all governments of the world. And uh, we have the opportunity, we have the possibility here to engage the big powers uh, in a dialogue for the good of the whole world community. The main issue here is uh, not the broader one of disarmament, but, but, uh, but uh, the more uh, urgent one of those who have the bulk of the, the, the weaponry right now and uh, negotiate confidence building uh, procedures so that there is close to zero risk that anything will happen because of technical failures or, or on any kind of, 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 of human uh, errors in, in the whole process. That's the most urgent thing. The General Assembly as such, of course, cannot uh, order big powers to agree on disarmament. The, the General Assembly is uh, hopefully exercising a moral authority. The General Assembly is the really uh, democratic, all-inclusive body of the membership of the United Nations. So there will be this moral pressure on those who are the big spenders and the big uh, 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 armament uh, states of the world to, to, to realize that there is much, much more need for living up to the obligations of development assistance, of supporting uh, the transform transformation to a more sustainable world than using much, much more money on an already incredibly costly uh, uh, armament race. I think certainly that parliamentarians should participate in the workings of the United Nations and, and uh, the country where I come from in Denmark, we have always had included in our government delegations for the opening weeks of the General Assembly in September and October, uh, a number of parliamentarians. I think it's very, very necessary that the national parliamentarians are informed and taking part in the decisions uh, and discussions here at the UN so that it is not only uh, uh, the 
the forum of the government. It's about we the peoples. I would really like to see happen that what President Obama said in his uh, Prague speech some years ago about the need to embark on the road of totally elimination of, of nuclear weapons would be a, an effort supported by each and every of the nuclear powers. Uh, I think we can celebrate the 26th of September uh, with one good new news, namely that we have had the Iran nuclear agreement uh, supported by, by all the major permanent five members in Germany, uh, in the UN, and the huge majority of the United Nations membership. That is one important step forward in avoiding uh, further proliferation of nuclear weapons. But, but, but what we need now, and what would be wonderful to hear on the 26th of September, is that the existing nuclear powers will say, yes, we want to engage in a process that leads to a controlled elimination of uh, the stockpiles of nuclear weapons. A movie like that uh, is, is a, a good tool in the education of world public opinion also that this danger of uh, nuclear war by accident is still there. It can happen again and we cannot be sure that another courageous man is at the screen in that moment. I really hope that uh, those who are negotiating on disarmament will have the opportunity to see the film uh, on 26th of September or at a later stage. The mobilization of understanding at the general public through this film uh, about the risks of accidental nuclear wars or accidental wars uh, uh, of different kind. Uh, was there and is still a risk because we, we still have nuclear weapons, for instance, on high alert at, at, at the arsenal of, of, of major powers and, and accidents could happen and maybe the, uh, many people don't realize after the, the end of the original Cold War and the disarmament measures that were taken at that time that we still have a situation that is uh, comparable uh, with the very dangerous situation we had in 1983. I would certainly recommend each and everyone engaged in international peace and security uh, also to see the film uh, and realize that the uh, grassroots efforts so put pressure on governments to re-engage in disarmament and controlled bilateral disarmament measures uh, is as urgently needed now as it has been uh, since the foundation of the United Nations.